This is a hypothesis test of one population mean. The question says, test the claim that the average body temperature of healthy adults is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. A sample of 106 people found that their average body temperature to be 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use a 0 0.01 level of significance, and we're going to use the traditional approach to hypothesis testing. In order to start hypothesis testing, the first step is to identify the given values in symbolic form. In order to do that, we have to look over the question again. 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is the population of all healthy adults. So that is a value that we give to mu. Mu is equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. As we read along, we'll see 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit is the standard deviation. That is sigma, the population standard deviation, 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. And it says that a sample of 106 people, that is n. And then we read along and we see the average body temperature of those 106 people is 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is x bar is 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use a 0 0.01 level of significance. That's alpha equals 0 0.01. And we've identified step number one with all the symbolic values. In step number two, we're going to identify the claim and write our null and alternative hypothesis. Now remember, you can't change what somebody claims. They said what they said. So all we can do is write our claim out. And the claim says in mathematical symbols what, what the words here say. And it says, test the claim that the average body temperature of healthy adults is 98.6 degrees. So mu is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now with the null hypothesis, remember the null hypothesis must always contain equality. So the null hypothesis, since we the claim is already with an equal sign, we have to use mu is equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The alternative is always the opposite of the null hypothesis, and the al alternative hypothesis is always the opposite of the null, and the null is always the opposite of the alternative hypothesis. So when we have equals, the opposite of that is not equals. So it's not equals to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now remember, our claim is in our null hypothesis. That's what we've said and that's what the question reads, so we're not changing that. Step number three indicates to calculate the test statistic. In order to calculate the test statistic, we have to identify the appro appropriate formula to use, which would be a z-score because we know the population standard deviation. And so by our formula tables, we have z is equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over the square root of n. Filling in all of those values from step number one, we'll see x bar is 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit, mu is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to divide by sigma, which is, so we do that calculation first, and then we eventually are going to divide 0.62 divided by the square root of n, and remember n was 106. So if we compute that, we're going to take the difference here first, and then we're going to take that value, we've got to find this value first also, and then we'll take this number, whatever we find here, and divide by this number in total. And doing that calculation out, you should get for the top uh, negative 1.4, and then the bottom would simplify down, and then our final answer would be negative 23.25. Remember, z-scores use two decimal places. So the z-score, or our test statistic, is a z-value equal to negative 23.25.
Now, step number four, we have to identify the critical region or the rejection region. Now, first, in order to determine that, we have to look at the alternative hypothesis from step number one and determine if it's a one- or a two-tailed test. Always when we have not equals in the alternative, it's two sides because not equals means greater than or less than. So we would draw out our z distribution or our normal distribution. We would shade in the right side and we would shade in the left tails. Okay, so we would shade in two tails. This is a two-tailed test. We then have to go in and look at our level of significance and it's 0 0.01. So we have to divide our uh, tails equally because this would be alpha over 2 or 0 0.01 divided by 2 which is 0 0.005. That is the area in the right shaded tail and since it's a symmetric distribution we also have an area of 0 0.005 in the left tail. Now what we want to do is find the z-score corresponding to that value. So we have to use the tables in our textbook to tell us what those values are. So you have to get out your z-tables and when you read your z-tables you will find a z-score that corresponds to a 0 .005. So you have to look in the body of your z-tables. So here is my z-tables. I want to look in the body. So I want to look in the body here for 0 .005. And you'll find an arrow that tells you the z-score should be 2.575. So it says the area should be 0 .005 and the z-score is 2.575. So since it's a symmetric distribution, so we have a z of 2.575 would be to the right, and z equals negative 2.575 to the left. So all we have to do for the critical region or the rejection region is write that the rejection region we'll label that as RR for rejection region, is a two-tailed test. So we will say that the Z, the rejection region, is any test statistic that lies less than negative 2.575 or a test statistic that is greater than positive 2.575. So that is our rejection region. Now in the next step, step number five, we have to determine does our test statistic fall in that rejection region. Now remember our test statistic from step number three was negative 23.25. So our test statistic does lie in the rejection region because negative 23.25 lies way over here which lies in the rejection region. So we're going to say that we are going to reject the null hypothesis because it does lie in that rejection region. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And then as a final step, we have to say something about our original claim and make a conclusion and a recommendation. So we have to follow the sentence. We're going to say that we have decided to reject the null hypothesis and we'll say there well we have to determine if we're going to say is there or is there not sufficient evidence well if my claim remember was in my null hypothesis I can't change what somebody says so this is where the claim was so if I'm rejecting the null hypothesis I'm in essence rejecting my claim so I cannot support my claim. So therefore I'm going to say there is not sufficient evidence at the, remember it's alpha equals 0.01 level uh, to suggest 
And then we're just going to restate exactly what the claim said before, because again, we can't change what somebody said. Uh, to suggest that the average body temperature of healthy adults is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is concluding our hypothesis testing for one population mean by the traditional approach.